everyone. I am Kate Alfonso. I will be your teacher for today. Our objective, at the end of the lesson, the student should be able to describe the influence of iconic artists belonging to the neoclassic and romantic periods. Are you ready to listen? Let's start. Neoclassicism and Romanticism from 1740 to 1850 Art forms of the Neoclassic period were produced in the late 18th century. These artworks are influenced by ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Some of the famous artists of the Neoclassic period are J.A.D. Ingress, Jacques Louis David, Robert Smirk, Robert Adam, Antonio Genova, Jean Antoine Houdon, and Bertel Torvaldsen. Neoclassic style is highly visible in paintings, sculptures, and architecture of the 18th century. Their paintings is often considered the direct opposite of the Romantic era. Neoclassical art had a huge hold on Europe for many years. At the root of its philosophy, Neoclassicism revived the true style of classical art the world had come to know from ancient Greece and Rome. Example of the painting that you've seen on the screen is The Oath of the Horati by Jacques Louis David. Painters like Jacques Louis David made the style famous through the symbolic paintings of The Oath of the Horati. It depicted a Roman legend of two warring cities and stressed the importance of sacrifice for one's country. The main characteristic of neoclassical paintings were the emphasized backgrounds, organizing the composition around symbolic numbers, and telling idealistic stories of moral triumph and civic duty. German painter Caspar David Friedrich once said, the artist's feeling is his law, and it was in early landscape paintings like his that the Romantic era began. You see, Romantics believe in expressing the brutalities of human emotion through art. We have here an example of his work. It is entitled Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog by Caspar David Friedrich. We have here another example of painting. It is entitled The Death of Sardanapalus by Eugene Delacroix. It is an example of powerful compositions erupted during this time, with artists often painting mythical, landscape, or historical scenes focused around particular message. Romantics rejected the rational ways of neoclassical artists and upheld their love of individual expression over the restraints of traditional customs. Most of what we see in sculpture during this time lends itself to the neoclassical side of art. The rigidity of marble meant that expressive and expansive gestures were far too limiting for romantic artists. We have here an example of sculpture. It is entitled Psyche Revived by Cupid's Kiss Sculpture by Antonio Canova. Even with very few examples of Greek sculpture still available at this time, Sculptors reveled in the classic beauty of an art form they believed to be superior to its Roman counterpart. Successful excavations meant that more people were collecting antique sculptures, not only for museum but also for their own private collections. Romanticism is highly contrasted with neoclassicism. It is a reaction to the classical, contemplative nature of neoclassical pieces. It seeks modernism and expresses emotion through art. Famous artists in this era were Jean-Louis Theodore Jericho, Eugene Delacroix, Francisco Goya, Franco Rude, and Antoine Louis Barrie. Landscape painting became more popular due to the people's romantic adoration of nature. Theodore Rosso and Jean Baptiste Camille Corot led the Romantic landscape painting in France. Gothic revival architectural movement began in the late 1740s in England. It became widely used for churches and civic buildings throughout the West 
especially in Great Britain and the United States. Though different in style, the eras of neoclassical and romantic art both became embedded in Europe's history. Their wide range of culture and influence is a true testament to the evolution of art. Did you understand our lesson very well? If not, you may go back to the lesson presented in your module. But if today's lesson is very clear to you, congratulations! You may now answer the exercises in your module.